Is it worth studying Blender Python when people all around are saying things like this? There are no programmers in five years. Or the fact that ChatGPT can write Blender Python scripts and add-ons. Hearing this as an artist can make you question, is it even worth studying Python at this point in time, when ChatGPT can make that skill set obsolete? Let's explore the questions that AI-assisted coding with ChatGPT bring up. For example, is it even worth to study Python? And what is the point of learning programming at all? Also, what these AI coding assistants can do or not do. Let's take a look at the whole development process of a Blender Python script or add-on from the point of view of an artist who is using ChatGPT for coding but doesn't understand any Python, and from the point of view of an artist who's also using ChatGPT for coding assistants but has learned Python. We'll try to understand what parts of the development process the AI coding assistants will level the playing field and make the programming skill set obsolete. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the development process steps. There's different ways to divide the development process, and I decided to divide the process into four major steps. The first step is research and design. Like with any art project, the process starts with gathering reference for what you're about to make, and you can achieve that result using different techniques, so selecting the right technique is also important. The same thing goes for developing Python scripts and add-ons. We find references to existing add-ons and scripts that do similar things that we want to do. Also, we think through the design of the add-on or script, what it's supposed to do, what are the UI elements, before starting out. Having this plan in place is crucial for the success of your project. ChatGPT really levels the playing field here, allowing an artist that doesn't know any Python to do the right research, figuring out what add-ons already exist and how they could work. The pro version of ChatGPT will actually even search the internet to get the latest information. Because it takes time to train the ChatGPT model, the information that you will be querying might be several years old, but that issue is resolved with a pro version. The primary advantage of artists who know Python on this particular step is being able to dive deep into the implementation of those reference add-ons, seeing what actually is important to make those add-ons successful. Next comes the implementation step. This step will contain the most coding, and this is where the AI coding assistants will shine. They will allow you to quickly get from an empty Python file to something that's working. From personal experience, during this step, if I want to try to implement something more complicated, I have to do a lot of hand-holding, meaning that the AI assistant would generate some code, but it's not exactly doing what I asked it to do. And this is where the artists that don't know any Python are going to get in trouble. Doing that type of hand-holding that I did does require quite a bit of technical knowledge and Python skills. An example of such a problem could be that the coding assistant would generate some code that almost works, but you need to tweak it slightly to make it work. I've ran into this multiple times, where the code was almost working and I needed to just fix one line. Using my Python skills, I was able to quickly find the issue and resolve it. An artist with no Python skills would be solving the same issue for hours or maybe even days. There's also another issue that the AI coding assistants would run into. They usually try to create the best possible code that you've asked them to write, but sometimes this is not enough and you need a bit of creativity to solve a particular problem or issue. For example, if you would write an add-on and there's a bug in Blender itself that makes your add-on stop working. Now, and in this scenario, there is no way for you to change Blender, so you'll need to deal with that from your own Python code. This creative problem solving is usually called adding hacks into your code. Hacks are some nasty code that you need to write to make sure that your add-on works in some edge cases. A great example of this creative problem solving comes from game development. The developers of Fallout 3 had to solve an issue of adding vehicle motion into an engine that didn't really support that. The creative solution that they came up with was attaching a vehicle or a train to an NPC and putting that NPC under the ground and making it run between stations. This type of creative problem solving would be quite difficult for an AI coding assistant, meaning that the artist that is using this without any Python skills won't be able to create those types of solutions. Next comes testing and optimizing your code. On this step, you'll be trying to break your add-on to see where it could fail, pushing it to its limits. So when the users of your add-on will get it, they won't see any of these issues. From a point of view of an artist that doesn't know any Python or programming, you'll be testing everything in a row and there is no real concentrated effort on testing particular features. But from the other hand, an artist who does know Python will know exactly which parts of the code 
you might run into issues, edge cases, and so on. This way, reducing the amount of testing that you actually need to do to get the same result and quality. With optimization, it's pretty straightforward. You find the parts of your code that are slow and improve them. No one wants to be using a tool that takes minutes to show the result. At the time of this recording, there aren't any AI assistants that could actually profile and figure out where exactly your code is slow. So the artist without any Python skills won't even be able to do this part. And finally, we have maintenance and feature requests. For some add-ons and scripts, this step will actually be longer than the initial planning and implementation steps because this step actually doesn't ever end. You'll constantly be improving your add-on fixing issues that the users would report. The problem that AI coding assistants will run into this step is basically not being able to work well in an existing code base. The current capabilities of AI assistants are pretty limited to understanding the full code. An analogy of this would be for you to be working on a really highly detailed scene in Blender, but your monitors would be in another room and the only way for you to see them is through a small keyhole. You can imagine that this could be quite a challenge for you to get the result that you're looking for. Now, the biggest irony in all of this is that the artists that are purposefully avoiding learning Python will actually learn Python eventually. ChatGPT is actually a gateway drug into programming. It's tricking more and more people every day to try out programming and to show them that it actually isn't that hard as they imagined it. Embracing that you need to learn Python will set you apart and allow you to use the full capabilities of these AI coding assistants. To start using these tools to their full potential, you need to learn Blender Python as fast as possible. And to do that, you should use ChatGPT. And in this video right here, I'll go over how you can do that. 